a percussion instrument has a very specific definition that uh, distinguishes it from all the other types of instruments that we know and love. I got a nice little beautiful uh, Webster's definition here. So a percussion instrument is a musical instrument played by striking with your hand or your stick or with a, a beater of some sort. Uh, so you can strike it, you can shake it, you can... Uh, Anything that involves uh, such uh, violent actions such as these. And we're going to talk about some of my favorite percussion instruments because in this area uh, uh, of the DMV area, of course, percussion is just like a mainstay. It's one of the most important instruments in the mix. It's one of the loudest instruments in the mix. And especially around here, people use percussion instruments in a little bit of a different way, which we'll be discussing later. We have the human voice, which is already kind of a percussion instrument. A lot of language, a lot of the early languages uh, consisted of a lot of, uh, you know, mouth sounds that could be considered to be percussive sounds. They didn't have a whole lot of vowels and a whole lot of conjugating verbs and all that kind of stuff. So there's something very uh, deep and tribal and like human, I think, uh, about percussion instruments. So I absolutely love the drums. I absolutely lear love learning uh, stuff on the drums to apply to the keyboard and vice versa. By the way, let me know in the comments, guys, what instruments do you guys play? Percussion, the, the main thing you're dealing with here is a rhythm. And every single instrument in the world has to uh, utilize rhythm, right? Otherwise, your, your music would be very boring. So let me know if, if you've uh, learned any cool rhythms on your instrument or if you play an instrument and the drums, um, how those two things have intermingled. What's your opinion on that? Uh, a, a really fun little activity that I used to love to do when I taught at uh, Bowie Montessori, I had a class of like little four and five-year-olds, right? What's funny about that class is there was a lot of drumming. There was a lot of percussion. I actually had a big case that I would bring that I had to lug all the way up this long driveway, all the way up like several flights of steps. And it was a huge box. Um, and I had all kinds of little drums and uh, beaters and tambourines and shakers, maracas, etc., etc. And we would have a lot of fun with the drums, but th but the kids would learn a lot as well. And so one of the things we used to do in that class is I would take all the drums and I'd put them all out on the floor and we would put them in little categories. And so we had a category for um, shakers, we had a category for strikers, and we had a category for uh, hand drums. And it was like, I don't know, 20, 30 little instruments. And out of all of those, we ended up with three piles. And with the exception of maybe once or twice out of dozens of times teaching this class, pretty much every single student, again, we're talking about three, four, five years old, pretty much the vast majority of every single student knew exactly where each instrument would go. They knew how to play it. They knew what to do with it. They knew how to get it to make a sound, standing and sitting and throwing of the drums uh, occasionally. <laughs> but generally, they, they kind of knew, they kind of got the point of it, right? And so those are the main three categories of drums, and, and everybody knows what that is. You know, even a non-musician can pick up a tambourine, and they, they know what to do with it, right? Most uh, percussion instruments are kind of limited in what they can actually express in terms of, uh, you know, notes and music. If you're looking at something like this, uh, this is uh, actually, this does not have any uh, keys, it does not have chords, it does not have harmonies, it does not have, you know, chord progressions and, and arrangements and all this. There's only a couple of parameters that we have to work with here. If you know where I'm going with this, definitely put it in the comments. Um, so if I hit this, right, there's no way to really change that note. I mean, I could try, I guess I could try, like, putting my hand in it. Well, doesn't really, doesn't really change it that much. I could try, I guess, like pushing down on the, on the top of it, like 
And that, yet that doesn't even really change it either. So it's all the same pitch, right? So what? It's kind of kind of like doing this, right? So we have no pitch, but we have a lot of expressive abilities with this, don't we? Because we can still play it loud, play it soft. Puts a little, couple of little soft notes in there, and a couple of big accent notes, um, and that's that's basically all we have, guys. I mean, we can we can play it loud, we can play it soft. So, you know, this drum obviously uh, comes from the Middle East. When I was there for my uh, tour in Iraq, um, and they gifted this to me because you know, hanging out with the natives, <laughs> we. Uh, you know, we, 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 we found a common ground uh, through music. So I, I had no idea that um, Iraqi civilians were so uh, such big fans of jazz fusion, but apparently they are. So all we have is dynamics, right? And this is why percussion instruments are so important, because you're not bogged down by a bunch of notes, right? You can hit it loud, you can hit it soft. That's all it comes down to. And I think all of us musicians, no matter what instrument we play, we can all practice that in a way. Limit, you know, come up with exercises where you're taking one note and uh, seeing how expressive you can make it. So I'll do a little uh, piano improvisation here to illustrate the point. I'll give you one note, and I'm going to... Turn up just a little bit. I got uh, one note here, and I'm going to see how expressive I can make this note. Now I am going to add some chords down the bottom. My right hand is limited to one singular note. So let's try it. Let's see what happens. So we can take a loud note, and obviously that makes it decay a little bit longer. You can play off of that decay. Right, so you can, you can hold this. This is something you learn if you play a lot of Chopin. It's still in there somewhere. And then see if you can hit it again and pick it up exactly where that previous uh, note lands in its decay as it decays, and then play it again right here at the same dynamic level. This is how you can really add a lot of cool depth and uh, flavor into your playing because you don't need a million notes. One note already does so much. And you learn this kind of stuff if you play a lot of drums because you're severely limited. Um, another thing we have with drums, of course, is the note duration. And not every drum can do this, but if we hold a note, we can also play it nice and short. So you can... You can come up with rhythms. You can come up with some short ones, some short long ones. Uh, for instance, if you, if you guys out there uh, practice scales, practice your scales, you can take, instead of just doing uh, note, 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 Short, long, short, long. Okay, so let's try this. Same rhythm, really, but we're holding some of them and we're releasing some of them. So you could do all kind of different combinations of this. You can take your scales in tenths and in sixths and et cetera, et cetera. And now I'm just, instead of getting really good at the C major scale, you're getting good at 
rhythm. You're getting good at time.